Today I am going to give you a whiteboard presentation about the social network analysis and how that can help us understand resource management or resource governance better. I'm going to start by drawing a very simple ecosystem. I'm using an aquatic system as an example because it's something I'm very familiar with myself. And in this system, we obviously have many different things. Loads of fish that are probably interacting by eating each other, but also phytoplankton, zooplankton, interactions between the land and the water, but also the climate and the water. And all together, this makes for a very complex system, what we call ecosystems. Because of all these complex linkages, this is a system that's very tricky to understand for anyone. Now let's add some people. These are all resource users of different kinds. I'm drawing these three because they are all using the system in different ways. You see this one person here interacting with the system by gleaning or collecting things in the shoreline. Uh, here we have a fisherman using some kind of fishing device, a hook and line. And here we have another type of fisherman who's diving and using perhaps a spear gun. What's interesting here is that all these three people are going to perceive the system differently. This person will see something that occurs in this area. This fisherman is likely to just see things from the surface, but also by means of what he pulls up from the deep. This fisherman who's swimming around in the water is much more likely to see things that are going on under the surface. So in summary, they will have different interpretations of what is going on in the system. They'll have a small part of the knowledge of the whole. But what we need to manage these kinds of systems properly is a holistic picture as much as possible. So we need people to communicate and learn. And of course they can do that. This is where social network analysis comes in. Because it can help us understand how these people communicate with each other and how they are able, through that communication, to pass on their knowledge. And this is a way of understanding how knowledge is actually built up and communicated in society at large. Now, uh, what's interesting about social network analysis is that it helps us map the relations between all the different users here and the patterns of interactions or patterns of knowledge communication. So we can deduce whether a particular community is more likely to actually learn from each other or whether they're divided into subgroups that are very unlikely to come to a consensus about what's going on in this system. Now, people, and history has shown this, that people uh, inevitably need some sort of rules to agree on how to use the system sustainably over time and not over-exploit. These rules are often, they can be devised by self-organizing within a community, but often you need some sort of, or there is some sort of form, uh, authority. This can be a leader within a community, but it can also be an external agency such as a government agency in, in place to control this. And so these, this agency, which I'm representing here <laughs> with the crown, is some kind of authority. And if they are devising rules about this system, they need to know and understand what's going on. And therefore, understanding how each of these actors are linked to these externally or to these authorities that are devising the rules becomes crucial for understanding which type of knowledge is feeding into the rules. And this, in turn, is important for understanding whether these rules are actually going to reflect or match what it accurately what is going on in the system. Now, I've given you the example of knowledge or information transfer between people as a way of looking at network analysis and resource management. But, as I'm sure <coughs> you've deduced by now, you could look at many other things flowing between people, such as money, favors, disfavors, who likes who, and so on and so forth. And by doing that, you'd actually be able to look at many other kinds of social processes that might be interesting for understanding outcomes in resource governance. 